The Modern Acre, agriculture for the next generation farm and business. The Modern Acre is a community of students, farmers, professionals, and entrepreneurs passionate about building their ag businesses through modern day innovation and technology. If you're in the ag industry and looking for strategies for your business and inspiration from industry leaders and disruptors, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and join the community of ag innovators at themodernacre.co. Hey guys, you're listening to episode 38 of The Modern Acre. As always, we've got a really good good one for you this week, but we have some exciting news to start. We are on a new uh, distribution platform on Spotify. Yep, for all those listeners that have been waiting for us to get on Spotify, I know there's just been tons and tons and tons that have been waiting for this moment. It's finally here, guys. Yeah, I mean, we heard we heard all the requests on Twitter, all the all the DMs on Instagram. Get on Spotify. Get on Spotify. We're here. Yep. So zero friction now for you to listen to the Modern Acre on the platform of your choosing. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, um, as well. Yeah, I've never even heard of Stitcher, but it's great. We're on there. Yep. You're not listening to the podcast on on Stitcher, Tim. I'm such an Apple Podcast guy. <laughs> Awesome. Well, no, guys, we're we're super excited with how the podcast is going. Just awesome guests each week. Um, we've just met a lot of really cool people and listeners um, that are just trying to innovate in the world of agriculture. So it's been a lot of fun for us. Um, we're just hoping to keep it coming for you guys with with awesome guests. This week we have Anna Haldewang of Plan B. Yeah, Anna has a really cool company um, just kind of getting started called Plan B. Um, which is creating a bee-like drone platform that could aid um, bees in the pollinization of flowers and plants. Yeah, I think what what she's got going is really interesting because you know we've talked about a lot about the labor shortages um, facing the agriculture industry today, um, and this one is kind of an offset of that um, with bees um, and the pollination they do, and you know the work that they they do. Um, you know, there's a decrease in the bee population due to different factors. And so plan B, um, its whole purpose is to draw awareness to the declining bee population and provide a solution to help supplement, um, this issue. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. Um, it was really interesting to hear her take just kind of coming from the industrial design perspective. If you go on their website and, um, just read about the company, just the design that they have is really cool. Yeah, I mean, if we'll definitely share some of the pictures. Uh, her concept is really interesting. It's got a lot of um, buzz in the media um, about what, what her concept's all about. Um, I think from a design perspective and from a functional standpoint of you know how it can help supplement uh, these bees. So with that, let's get into it. Hey, Anna, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're super excited to talk to you. Um, We've got a lot to cover, but maybe just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're up to right now. Uh, My name is Anna Haldwing. I am founder and CEO of a startup called Plan B. And Plan B is an autonomous pollinating drone designed for agriculture use. Super interesting concept, and we're we're excited to learn more about it. Um, maybe before we get into the to the business, can you talk about where you grew up and how you got into agriculture originally? Yeah, so I grew up in an uh, area in northern Indiana. It's it, I live in, in an area with about a hundred lakes, but there's also a lot of uh, farmland in the area where we grow corn and soybeans and tomatoes. Um, and so I have a lot of friends who, who are involved in agriculture. And um, after I graduated high school, I uh, went to Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. I majored in industrial design, which is, uh, I guess, better known as product design. And, um, and while there, I, in one of my foundations courses um, called Form Development, my professor assigned us to create a self-sufficient object. So I started researching the basic needs of plants and I came across pollination and I started reading all these articles and about the decline of bees and, and watching a lot of documentaries on the issue. And I knew I wanted to create a product that raises awareness to this issue. So it was a four week project, it was pretty quick. Um, and so, uh, well, you your listeners. So I'll, I'll try to describe the drone and, and what I submitted for that project. Um, so of course the drone is black and yellow to represent a bee. Uh, there are six sides to the drone, which represent a hexagon. 
um, and it's an organic shape. So if you flip it upside down, it uh, it looks like a flower. So when it's interacting with that flower, it's mirroring that image. And I originally designed this uh, drone to be in your backyard. So it's about the size of a hand. So when you looked out your window and you saw this drone in action, it created this connection between you, the drone, and nature. And you kind of had your own story to tell about the bees. Um, and after that class ended, I started doing more and more research into it and realized how great of an impact, a positive impact I'd, I'd make in agriculture. Uh, so here I am. Yeah, it's really cool. The uh, the CAD drawings on your website are are very cool. And just looking at the drone, we'll post some pictures of that on our on our website and the show notes as well. Kind of interesting how a school project has turned into a, a business. Kind of what, what made you decide to kind of take it to the next level and turn the project into uh, more of a formal business plan? So uh, during, during college, I kind of had it as like a, a side hobby where I continue to research and, and kind of tweak it a little bit. Um, I didn't think anything of it that it, that it could become something. I, I mean, entrepreneur was just never in the back of my mind. Um, but in, but, uh, in February of 2017, um, a couple of news came to me and um, and wanted to hear more about it. And it kind of spread from there, from 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 me telling my story and telling about the the prototype and what I was doing with it. And um, and then last year I was invited to Forbes in Salinas and I demoed the product. And I remember seeing the excitement and in, in everyone's eyes and and listening to growers in the area and um, I kind of knew I had something from from how they described that the need for it, and um, so I came back to Indiana and I sat down with with a really good friend here uh, in agriculture, and um, I said, "Could I really do a business?" He said, "Yeah, of course, go for it." So uh, here I am, one year later, I've been I've been working on it full time. That's such a cool story. So, you know, a lot of times on this podcast, we talk about the the labor challenge that farmers have. And this is kind of a unique um, kind of sector of that in terms of, you know, bees um, being uh, kind of a labor force that's in decline, so to speak. So maybe talk to us a little bit more about that problem um, and how your your concept, your drone addresses that problem. Some of the issues that that bees face today um, are transportation, parasites, disease, nutrition, pesticides management, and um, and I'm addressing a few of those issues. Uh, so, so you guys live out in California, so I'll give the uh, almond crops as a as an example. Um, almonds rely 100% on on honeybees for for pollination during that time frame, and when you bring so there's not enough hives in that state in order to pollinate all those crops and so people have to bring in thousands and thousands of hives and load them on trucks and then bring them into to california for this this pollination season and a few issues that have come up is one bees are not nomadic they're not designed to travel and when you're doing that that creates a lot of stress on them and um and then when you bring all of these bees into one area it's uh, in, from different areas as well. Uh, you know, you can check the hives before and check for diseases and parasites, but if there's a beginning of something, um, you can't catch it. So when they're in these areas, there there's a possibility that they could be spreading diseases amongst one another. And not only that, but bees also, honeybees rely on multiple uh, food sources in order to have a healthy diet. And when you're putting them in these um, hundreds and thousands of acres of of one crop, it, um, it it they have a lack in diet. And so also after so after they do the the almond pollination, they then um, say for example go over to Georgia and they pollinate the watermelons, and then they go up to Maine and they do the blueberries, and then they come to Indiana and Michigan and do the apples, and then they go over to Wisconsin and pollinate the cranberries. And it's just this one continuous circle. And when you're doing that, you're you're continuing to spread these diseases. You got the issues with the stress and the transportation, and you also, um, you're, you're not only spreading it amongst other traveling pollinators, 
uh, that, that are for this job, but you're also uh, spreading it to hobbyists in the area as well that may only have three hives or two hives. That makes a lot of sense. Definitely addressing a lot of, of a lot of problems there. Can you maybe talk a little bit about how the drone's going to be utilized? It's not replacing the bees. It's going to work alongside of them. Can you talk a little bit about what the drone is actually going to do alongside the bees? Right, right. Um, so Plan B is designed to uh, be a helping hand and provide extra security to growers. Uh, so with bees, they don't know to cross pollinate. They're there just for the pollen and to supply for the hive. Uh, whereas the drone will be able to be very precise in that task. Um, it'll be able to go to flower A to flower B and and continue that pattern back and forth. Um, and uh, and then um, bees also, they have a tendency to stay inside uh, when it's windy or when it's cold and, and they don't come out at night. So uh, during this time, especially with uh, the pollination season, it's, it's a very short time frame and blossoms need to be pollinated. So Plan B will be there to, to lend a helping hand during that time when the bees are not out um, and be able to pollinate those crops. And bees are also very smart, where if they see a food source that's closer to the hive, they're not going to venture further out to uh, pollinate on the outskirts uh, for the crops that are farther away from that hive. So Plan B will be able to step in there. Uh, there's less activity and less pollination. Got it. That makes sense. Um, so maybe Anna, tell us a little bit about you know your experience so far. You've you've built some prototypes. So where are you at the phase um, of the business, and what are kind of the the next steps for you? So we're still in development stage. Um, next steps: continuing to develop the prototype and um, and do trials and continue to adjust as we go uh, in order to, to make the best prototype before launching. I know you're speaking at Forbes Ag Tech in Indianapolis coming up in a couple weeks. So are you going to be demoing there? And what do you plan to talk about while you're, while you're being uh, featured on a panel there? Yeah, uh, I'll be, I'll be demoing one day and then the next day I'll, I'll be in the innovation tent. So uh, people can come up to me and talk to me and ask questions and, and see the drones and uh, see see them see what I've been up to and how they've increased in size over time, and uh, and then at the panel, um, I'm not I'm not quite sure where that'll go yet, uh, but I I'm looking forward to to discussing um, the issues that bees face and and how Plan B is going to be able to step in and and be an extra helping hand to to growers and bees as well, and I think I also I really want to point out the fact that. I'm just one piece of the puzzle and there needs to be multiple solutions in order to solve this problem. Yeah, that's, that's a, a key thing to point out. Um, so maybe talk about some of the challenges you've faced thus far. It sounds like, you know, you've iterated over time with the prototype. Uh, maybe talk us through some of those key challenges. The product is very high tech and we're working with artificial intelligence and training the drone to do things that it hasn't done before or even has been designed to do. Uh, so, so that's been extremely challenging, but also really beneficial. And, um, and so we've been doing really well with that. Um, I guess another example of technology would be batteries. Uh, so right now the drone currently carries about a three pound lithium brick size battery. <laughs> And uh, and so having to replace that after after so long um, and switching that out, uh, I'm really looking forward to when solar panels will be uh, hitting the market um, because right now what what's available uh, is really only is at an insane price and is is really only available to to NASA to work with. So I'm I'm looking forward to when that price lowers down and. Um, and then also the different crops. So pollinate the plant bees going to be able to pollinate um, berries, almonds, melons, palm, and stone fruits. Uh, so being able to adjust the drone according to the flower size and shape and position um, is has been challenging, but it's it's just the small adjustments that we need to make um, in order to to have a perfect prototype. That's really cool. It sounds like a fun process kind of going through different versions and iterating over time. It sounds like you're, you're making some really good progress. 
wanted to talk to you about um, just the business model once you once you have the final concept and you're ready to go to market. Um, just kind of what the business model look, is going to look like. Do you see it something as uh, business as a service where growers are coming to you to to contract Plan B, or is this going to be a, a product that can be bought or sold directly to farmers or to beekeepers? So it'll it'll be um, either a rental system or a service. Um, with the rental system, we we really need to keep in mind that uh, this product needs to yes, it's very high tech, but um, it needs to be very user friendly, and um, and then of course uh, and and um, with the service, of course, being able to go out there and, and pollinate it it really all depends, especially with the pricing on what's going on with the crop, um, the level of urgency in order to pollinate, and how many blossoms are are on that crop. Um, so, so it all depends on, on the timing. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, how you're, how you're thinking about that go to market strategy. Um, so maybe as we wrap up this section, you know, what about the company journey have you found to be most surprising or unexpected so far? I am so impressed with the ex- level of excitement and the level of acceptance people are to startups in the ag industry, um, especially with universities. Um, Purdue University especially um, has has been very generous in, in answering my questions, even if it's through uh, forwarding of emails and, and being passed down the chain. Uh, eventually, my question is, is answered by the right people. And um, for them being able to take the time to, to help me in the areas that I need help in. Um, and especially with, uh, with the foundry, which is also affiliated with Purdue, um, they've been really helpful in, um, in, in the business development side and, and helping me work through the issues and, and telling me the, the guide and the step-by-step process to take in order to, to have a startup. So you're really not alone in the journey and people want you to know that. That's really good. That's some very good insights. Wanted to to kind of switch gears here and talk a little bit about advice and reflection. We have a lot of younger listeners of the show or people that are new to ag. What advice would you give them? Get out of the building and go to conferences and summits and listen to topics at hand. Even if you don't have an idea for what you want to start, you never know who you'll meet and what opportunities may come your way from that. And you have to constantly keep pushing yourself into unknown territory. And listening to the modern acre is a great way to start exploring other topics. Love that. That's that's amazing advice. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> that's great. Awesome. Well, kind of fun question here. If you were given uh, 50 acres of prime land in Indiana and you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you do with it? Without thinking about the location and money, um, I would love to create a pollinator habitat. Um, and not focused on honeybees, but focused on, on the local ecosystems and, uh, being able to, uh, have people come and and educate themselves or even have classes there where, where they'd be able to learn about, um, what's in their backyard, um, and, and ways to, to help pollinators in the area. Um, and even that they could take some wildflowers home and they're able to pollinate and, um, and and have fun with it because it's such a great topic yeah it's a really good answer i think uh, very educational i like the uh, the giving back side of that that answer for sure so kind of as we wrap things up here um talk about your outside interests outside of plan b i love to run every morning that kind of sets me up for my day um i love to I don't get out often but I I love to scuba dive actually um I love the water I love exploring the unknown um and and it is something about being down there where you where you get into this meditative state of breathing slowly and deeply and it's it's something I highly recommend everyone do because it's 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 so beautiful um I I enjoy I love animals so I I my dogs are my life and I I love playing with them every single day and uh yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to, Tim and I are going to have to get out scuba diving soon. That sounds really awesome. Did I sell you? <laughs> you did. You really did. Um, 
Awesome. Anna, this has been so fun talking to you and really interesting to learn more about your company. How can listeners get in touch and connect with you and Plan B? Uh, through LinkedIn. It's just um, my, my name, Anna Haldewang, and um, I'd, be able, I'd love to talk to everyone. Awesome. We'll definitely post that in the show notes and have have our listeners get in touch with you. Well, Anna, thanks again for your time. We really enjoyed having you on. Thank you for having me. So, Ty, what do you think? I thought it was a super interesting episode talking to Anna. I think she has a lot of really interesting thoughts and is clearly, you know, very passionate about this um, this problem um, with bees and how to provide a solution to it. I think uh, it'll be interesting to see Plan B's next steps. Yeah, I'd like really looking forward to seeing their rollout to kind of a commercial scale and seeing this implemented um, in some real live orchards. Well, guys, thanks so much for listening. Uh, Make sure to connect with us. Feel free to uh, email us about what you're doing, how you're involved in agriculture. We have a private Facebook group um, and we're on uh, social media as well. So definitely reach out and connect with us. Thanks, guys. 